Hello everyone, welcome, Ryan here from the London Craftsman channel, how are you keeping? Right, today's video is all about my workshop kits and what we use to make all our fitted furniture, such as wardrobes, window seats, alcove units, chest of drawers, dressers, floating shelves, cupboards. Today is an insight into everything that we use to be able to produce those pieces. All the bits and pieces we make are generally out of sheet material, so open air, birch ply, MDF. Today is all about showing you everything that we need to be able to fill those MDF edges, to machine those biscuit joints, to drill out adjustable shelves, to do machining, to do sanding, everything from start to finish. As you can see beside me, this is most of everything that we need. We've got a few machines dotted around inside the bench and a few beside me, which I'm going to show. Um, we've got hand tools, power tools, all little bits and pieces dotted around here. So today is basically showing you everything that we need to make fitted furniture. So this video is part two. Not sure if you've watched part one. Part one is all about our site fitting kits, what we need to fit all our fitted furniture that we make in here. Um, it's compacted away in two trend towers, two trend wheelable site boxes, everything that we need does fit in those boxes barring a few bits and pieces such as a chop saw and our benches and our hoover etc. Um, I am leaving part three as a little tempter for you to watch next week. I'm not going to join it onto this video but that is all going to be about finishing and basically what we have here is our workshop side. On the other side we've got our finishing side that is our spray booth racks etc. I'm going to be going through all of that in a, another video hopefully next week or the week after, showing you what paints we use, what sprayers, how um, we store our materials once it's painted, the fans and the filters, etc., etc. So um, yeah, if you're liking these videos, you've liked part two, which is this, and you've liked part one, surely you're gonna like part three. So yeah, once part three is out, that should be all the parts you need in order to make your furniture, finish your furniture, and install your furniture. So without further ado, Let's get cracking. Okay, so I think the easiest way is to have a little walk around. And there may be bits that I have missed um, and I haven't got out, for example, hand tools. We haven't got all our hand tools out. We do have other machines such as belt sanders and large routers and other bits and pieces like that, but they're stored away. This is the main majority of bits and pieces that we need. What I think we'll do is start with the cutting. So when we buy in sheet materials, it gets stacked in our spray room over there. Um, we've got racks in there where we store MDF, birch, oak veneer, and a few other bits and pieces. So we'll have a job that comes in, for example, a wardrobe like this, and we would make a cutting list. From this cutting list, we would then start bringing in our sheet materials on the bench. Cutting, we use a Makita plunge saw with a fine tooth blade in, and we've got three tracks here. We've got a 700, a 1.5, and a 3 meter. The three meter enables us to cut those eight by four sheets down in, in rips. And then the 1.5 allows us to cut it down into length. We've got the smaller track if we're just doing smaller components and we just want it to be a little bit more manageable. And um, we generally don't use it that much. What we need to help us cut up are these um, parallel guides. We've got two sets of these. And these, I've made so many videos on this and I've said it so many times, these are probably one of the best buys I've ever made because they're so cheap and they're fantastic. The build quality is really, really good. And we've got the track saw square, and it's adjustable as well, so you can just do angles with it. And um, that will just do our cross cuts. So once we've done the rips, then we'll just attach that to most likely the 1.5 or the 700, and we'll just rip those components down. They're both very, very accurate. They're brilliant tools. It just gives you more accuracy, really. So rather than just marking out your sheet material with a tape measure and lining up your track to it, um, you just line up the track saw square up against the edge, put it up against one pencil line and just cut as long as you've set it up correctly. We have a CTS hose and that connects to our ultimate workbench because within the workbench, these holes here, they go down into a valve system inside the bench, which ultimately goes to the hoover. So we have power underneath our bench, which is also connected to our hoover. But when we turn on the plunge saw, 
it turns on the hoover and it sucks the dust straight out so that's quite handy so we use the parallel guides the track saw square and the three tracks along with our plunge saw and our cts hose to do all our cutting now before i do move on we do have a table saw here as well so if we are cutting up drawer components for example um, and we just want to do lots of small rips then we'll just put the sliding carriage on this is the sliding carriage that sits on the rail there or if we've just got lots of smaller um, cuts to do we can just use the fence and just rip them through on our bench but generally it's the plunge saw with the tracks not to say that we don't use the table saw because we do um, so once it's all cut up we've obviously got a clean bench we would then stack up all our material um, into a pile let's just assume that we're doing MDF first okay so an MDF painted wardrobe we'd stack them all up so all the edges are showing the main reason for that is because we need to get those MDF edges nice and flat and filled and primed so that is the first stage before we start machining I'm going to little, put a little picture up there and a little link to a video describing what we do and um, all the procedures so that procedure just allows us to give us nice smooth edges and they are complete ready for machining the component um, such as a biscuit or an adjustable shelf or a pre-drill hole for a fixing to do the filling if you are going to watch the video we'll be it'll be showing you this anyway we use this um, ready mixed jointing compound along with these wide spreaders and a spot board, any piece of scrap. That will be the stuff that we use for large area of filling to do because there will be a whole stack there. So we need a lot of ready mix filler. You'll go through one of these in one job. Easy, probably more if you just buy a smaller tub. So this stuff is great and um, fills those little pits in the MDF perfectly. Gives you a nice smooth finish. So if we weren't doing MDF and we were doing oak veneer, for example, and we've got a lot dotted around, we've got two large jobs of oak veneer at the moment, that job there and that job there, then we would need to edge all the components. And we use a selection of two tools. Can you call an iron at all? I suppose you can. Um, the iron is handy. It's quick enough and it does a really good job. If you don't want to invest um, in a hot air edger, then an iron is the way to go. This is a little bit quicker and you don't need to prepare the tape first as in cut them all to length um, whereas the iron you do you've got to snip them to length and um, then just iron them on but it's deassembled at the moment this sits on this but I was using it to edge um, the inside of a finger pull handle where I had to get a little curve so I used the hot air from that to do to do the job and if we look in here and we've got a selection of edgings here so if we were to do oak veneer so we've got 50 and we had 36 somewhere and we've got 22 oak veneer and we've got white um 22 32 i believe don't have any wider white but that is paintable edging tape so if we were doing mdf wardrobes and we didn't want to do the stacking technique where we stack them all to get those edges nice we could just um, use our hot air edger and edge those edges instead and then trim them up after. So no filling and sanding, that tape does the job really, really well. We use it quite often. It just depends how big the job is, to be honest. If we've only got a few components, we will just use this. But again, we've got a video on what three methods are the best for finishing an MDF edge. So have a look up the top if you wanna see that. So now we've talked about finishing those edges. The next thing that we generally do is machine each component. So we would have the stack all finished here. The lines would have been striped up on all the pieces. Partly I had the lines, we could then square them across and do all our machining, such as biscuits, adjustable help, shelf pegs, etc. And here are the selection of tools that we use. This is a Makita Biscuiter along with the CTS adapter on them to connect to our CTS hose and that will do all our biscuit joints so all our carcasses are mainly with biscuit slots okay so no dominoes or dowels we use biscuits always have and number 10s as you can see here a few biscuit slots okay so this is what they do just allow you to join those components and it just helps you line up the component or the corners and the shelves gives you a little bit more strength in your carcass especially for shelves going across rather than just screwing them other things we use are sanders so when we are doing oak veneer and we want to sand a face then we'd use 120 and 240 if we are sanding mdf we'll just go straight to 240 grips and this is a six inch sander okay we go through all the bits and pieces in a moment the sanding pads um trimming we use this little handheld router and it's got a 1.6 millimeter round over cutter 
And what that allows you to do is put a nice little round edge on all of your components. So when you are making a wardrobe, you don't want sharp edges. You don't really want to swipe it with sandpaper. It's still going to be too sharp. I find a 1.6, the perfect round over. Any bigger, it just looks cheap and nasty. Just looks like a pencil round. And that helps you with the paint, paint as well. So when you are spraying, it takes paint a little bit better than if it was sharp. Stops chipping as well. And it just gives you better joints. So for example, inside your carcass, where the bottom hits up against your side, you just get a nice joint. Well, basically you get a nice joint in between every component when you round them over. So that's the trimmer. We also have a chamfer plane over here that does a similar job. And you just simply just put it on the corner like so and just run it through. So if you want to see a video comparing the hand plane to the trimmer, there's one up the top there just comparing the two different methods. Got a jigsaw for cutting out finger pulls or cutting bearers down or cutting little notches out before we start routering. We've got the power drill here for drilling out hinges. So on the end of the power drill, we've got the hinge cutter. Okay, so this little jig clips onto your door and then this little red um, part simply sits into that and then you could just pre-drill your hinge hole. It's got depth stopper on it so it doesn't go too deep and it drills it at exactly the right distance from the edge of the door every single time and they're very very cheap. Basically that's what the power drill is for. That's It's probably one and only use to be honest. Um, back here we've got a flat full sheet sander so if we've got shaker style doors we just need to get into the shaker part to sand it. Um, say for example we've prime the door and we need to sand it back before it goes back into being sprayed again we need to get into those little corners so that's perfect we'll just put um, 240 sanding pads in that couple of drills one for screwing one for pre-drilling and we've got a quarter inch router as well this is 18 volt this one quarter inch and it just does a multitude of jobs uh, lots and lots of different jobs you know it depends what we are actually doing um, but we do have the router table over there so run over it again, biscuiting for all of our biscuits and connecting our carcasses. We've got a jigsaw for cutting out notches and taking out the meat before we start routing out handles, for example. Power drill for our hinges, trimmer here, router trimmer for taking off all our, all our arises, selection of drills, another sander for getting into corners and another router. Moving on to a selection of tools. So the standard hand tools in here that we use are tape measures. We've got a little awl. So if we are pre-drilling, then we'll just put a little mark on it first so the drill bit knows where to start. We've got a selection of chisels. Obviously, we've got some nice ones when we just we need to do a nice, crisp job with the chisels. These are great. They, they hold their edge nicely. Hammer, planes, scrapers. Scrapers are pretty good for um, when you are cleaning up iron-on edging. So if you want to see another video on how we clean up iron-on edging, a really quick and easy way, chopping that edging back. So once you've edged your components, all these oak veneer components have been edged. Once you've edged them, you need to clean it up. The scraper does a fantastic job. There's a video right up there for you. Selection of squares. These are the Vico ones and these are great tools. Really, really cheap and they're all aluminium. Fantastic. And they've got little holes in them. You put your little pencil in them and um, run your square along. They're, they're great. Um, these ones in particular. So when we are marking... Um, fixing holes for example for our carcass we just put a pencil in there and just mark a line it's very very quick and easy um, combination squares we've got other tools other hand tools but these are the main ones that we use in here we also have a little box of pre-drills um, five mils for our adjustable shelf pegs and um, while i'm talking about adjustable shelf pegs we do have a selection of little templates these handmade templates we make these ourselves. We don't use any fancy routers or anything like that. I just think it's quick and easy. Just make yourself a little template rod and away you go. Pre-draw those out. Doesn't take long at all rather than getting out your router. I know the Festool do all these systems where you put your router on a, a track with lots of holes. You know, you have a set of holes done in a couple of minutes with a template. So yeah, we use the five mil for the adjustable shelf pegs and we've got three mils there for pre-drilling fixings on carcasses. A few other drill bits that we do use, but we've just got a nice little set there. Um, over here, we've got a selection of clamps. So when we're clamping up sometimes some shaker doors, we'll use these Bessies and we got these from Toolchimp. They do a great deal on a pack of six. So um, take a look at Toolchimp, brilliant place for Bessie clamps, the cheapest place. We've got a selection of these, so these work really well in our dog holes on our bench. They also slide into 
our little system here like so they slide in because we've got these little holes we've got dowels so when we are doing iron on edging and we've got a long side we've got a dowel there and we should have a dowel there but that one's missing we put the piece on the dowel and then we just slide these clamps and then just clamp our work to the bench fantastic little system just a little channel that goes on the end of your bench and a few holes so a little dowel can go in and it's really really simple to be able to edge your work or plane it or do whatever you want it's a nice clamping system but we use these clamps here to be honest my favorite clamps to to use on that system are these vico bessie copies and um, they're ratchet and they are so quick and easy it's just there's no twisting or turning it's just a couple of clicks and it's clamp to work on yeah so a couple of selections of clamps there we've got loads more we've got about 30 or 40 dotted around plus we have sash clamps which we don't use very regularly but they're handy to have when we are making up our drawers um, and we need to just put a component together we've got these little corner clamps here so basically just hold your corner together while you're gluing and pinning the drawer component we've got a video on that well, I'm showing you lots of video links at the moment. You're going to be really busy watching those videos, aren't you? All right. So before we move on to this stuff, I think that is the majority of it. So remember, there are a few things missing on here, other power tools and other hand tools. But this is generally what we use for what we do. Anyway, that is the whole point of this video is what I specifically do. Wardrobes, alcove units, all fitted furniture with sheet material. So moving on to other random bits and pieces before I do. We're at 32.7 thousand subscribers now, got to change that. So if you do like our content, you're finding it helpful, please subscribe. You've also got membership if you want to support our channel. One other thing is anything that you do buy through our links, we do earn a tiny bit of commission through um, those links. So thank you very much. Let's move on to these little bits and pieces, okay? This is just random bits that we use. We've got a selection of pads, okay? So we've got the third sheet sand and we've got half sheet sand pads, all different grades. We've got pads and we use the markers, okay? These are six inch and um, we've got anything from 320 up to P40. So they're all the sanding pads and we've got a selection of 80, 120, 240 sanding paper. I think we've got a few other grades. Go through tons of that. Glue is just a good quality glue in a bottle. Fillers, I've gone through this filler. This is for our big pack. And then we've got this little squeezy one when we're going out on site. We're filling pinholes on site or we're filling pinholes on shaker doors or other bits. Then this is great. You just squeeze a little bit out on your finger, put it in and another type, just a spreadable type. We've got some other glues here, Mitre Fast. Um, well, it's just basically a CA glue that just joins two bits of MDF or two bits of timber, really, really quick and easy. God, yeah, I was pouring out there. Probably hear it. We've got two pack filler, so for any large filling, any damage, anything like that, then you need a two pack. And I don't go down the route of the small tub, which is about this big for about 15 quid. You go to a car bodywork shop, get the easy one and it is fantastic it comes with hardeners two or three hardeners but one thing you might want to do is look on ebay and buy a white hardener because they come with red probably doesn't matter you if you are painting over it a few coats you won't show through but there's so much in there it's a three and a half liter tin for not a lot of money and this will last you a couple of years as you can see it probably is a couple of years old and that's only 20 pounds okay so if you are buying filler don't buy the small woodworking one this is great because it's so easy to sand it's cheap and it's really really tough over here we've got paint so we use acrylic primer undercoats water-based for priming all our edges once we've done our pack system sanded them all up on the pack then we'll just roll our two coats of primer with a little mini roller and a tray two coats it's just a light rub in between finishes are is going to be on part three but we do use osmo as our finish for all of this so this is a raw pollux oil this is the one that we used to achieve those finishes that you see over there because it keeps the oak color without giving the wet look so these are the biscuits that we use we use tens which is this size and we use zeros zeros are for joining two shelves onto one division where you still need a dowling um a, you know the aid of a dowel or a biscuit i call it a dowel it's a, the doweling effect um and tens for joining carcasses together um spare saw blades always go to trend for mine personally 
got these little rubber mats and you can just buy these from anywhere these are massive this is about two and a half meters long by a meter and we just spread them over our bench when we're just doing router work or we're oiling or something like that we don't want to damage a component um i know other people use dusty boys but these are so much cheaper and you can buy them from Lidl's or amazon for a fraction of the cost gloves always using gloves size large for us vinyl selection of brushes when we've just finished a component and it's ready to go in the spray room we'll basically get rid of most of the dust um, using brushes handy wrap wrapping all our components up getting us out of trouble and we've got a bit of blue roll wiping our hands and these little rags for other bits and we use these for oiling too so that is near enough everything apart from what's in our bench and what's behind us so in here is our table saw obviously it's a 10 inch table saw everyone probably needs a table saw in here is our little valve system for example the chop saw down the end and the table saw and cts hoses they need extraction so we could just swap these valves over to whichever hole or tool that we need we've also got a um, router in there because we've got a router table dust inside we've not actually used it it's been here for about two years it's a jessum um, that will get used eventually but i'll go over the router table in just a moment got a thickness saw over here to get us out of trouble um, we may need to plane a bit of timber down or some beads or something solid every now and then. Very handy to have. If you do need to make a piece of timber thinner, there's no other way of doing it other than a, than a table saw. And sometimes the piece is too wide. So a thickness saw is really handy. And here is our compressor. You know, air gun and pin gun could be attached to that. And we make shake style doors and we pin drawers together with that compressor. Oh. This is a brilliant one, by the way. If you want to see a video of this, this is the silent compressor. It, you basically can't even hear it. It's so quiet. Um, love that tool. Love that machine, shall I say. In here, we've got our chop saw. And it's on a scissor lift. So you just pump the scissor lift and it pops out of the hatch that is below these tracks and we've got little stoppers for those so when we are cutting up lots of strips comes in very handy i think there is just one last thing to show you really on this bench is the hoover to be honest we are upgrading to a more industrial scale hoover we've got a decent makita hoover because these run on a bag the bag gets full so quickly i think i'm just going to change to one that doesn't have a bag a bit more like an extraction unit for a spindle for example so that's the bench and we've got a couple more bits over here and then we're done okay we've got the band saw and we did get rid of a spindle and a big hot air edger a few years back because they just took up so much space i didn't get rid of this because it's very handy to have a band saw this is another thing that we really love it's got a trend router in it it's basically a mini spindle really and it works on a half inch cutter set because this is a half inch router so we've just got this one set up basically to do our re all of our rebating for our drawers so if you have a look at the back here um, of our drawer, it does the rebates for our bottoms to sit in. I only just got it about a year and a half ago and I just don't know how I live without it. I'd say that's a recommended tool to have. And just moving on to the last one, which is down here, which is a laser. Okay, and I've made a few laser videos and I'm trying to convince people that these things are brilliant to have. You could buy a 5 watt laser from for 100 to 150 pounds. A 10 watt might cost you about 250, 300 pounds. But they're perfect for lots of things, hobbies, cutting out shapes. But the thing I find the most useful for is when I want to make a template for a handle, for example, a finger pull handle or... We want to cut a shape out then we can make a template out of six mil mdf very very simple very very easy within five minutes you've made yourself a template for your router to follow you know since i've had these it's been a bit of a game changer for me and i do love the lasers so there we go that is basically everything um let me know if i've missed anything i probably have and let me know if you have any questions. Remember, everything is perfect for me here. You may have a different job, but um, for me, it's making bits of furniture using sheet materials, oak veneer, birch, MDF, and a few others. I hope that's helped you. Um, remember, if you have enjoyed, like and subscribe, especially subscribe. Remember, we've got part one, which is the site fitting kit. This is part two, which is our workshop. Part three will be all of our finishing in the spray room next door. So I'm going to leave it like that. Have a great rest of the day. Take it easy. Ciao for now.